The DCU is coming to an end, even after James Gunn had announced his upcoming DCU, which will be starring in a couple more years. I've just seen the brand new installment of the DCU, Blue Beal, now playing in theaters. But is this film worthy of trying to pull DC out of the black hole it's been in and redeem itself after the two humiliating failures they've had since earlier this year? Or is this one yet to be another big disappointment that's going to leave them completely blue? Maybe even y'all. Who knows? Find out in the spoiler-free review right now. Big Days Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Noel, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a spoiler-free review of the just-now-released superhero flick, Blue Beal, released by Warner Bros. and produced by DC Studios and the Saffron Company. The film was directed by Angel Manuel Soto, written by Gareth Dunnett, Alcoser. If I mispronounce that name, I do apologize. It's the 14th overall installment of the DCU, starring Solo Marjuana, who you may know plays Miguel on Cobra Kai as the titular character and alter ego M.A. Reyes. Along with Adriana Barraza, Damien Alcazar, Raul Max Trujillo, Susan Sarandon, Elpidia Carrillo, Brunt Marquinzi, and George Lopez. If I mispronounce any of those other names, I apologize. Anyway, this film was, wow, a real mind blower. Now, this film was to come to HBO Max. Uh, But they decided they had to go for a theatrical release. And well, after it recently made a premiere a few days before its release in, in El Paso, this film did get some pretty good response. Well, here's a little bit of what we know, what, what I can give to you. In a remote frozen tundra, Cord Industries manages to locate an artifact known as a scarab. Meanwhile, Jaime Reyes, excuse me, I keep mispronouncing that, I apologize, returns to his hometown of Palmeiras City after graduating college and reunites with his family. But he learns that his family will be losing their home due to financial difficulties uh, stemming from increased rent and his father, Alberto, losing his job. Jamie's sister, Milagro, manages to get both of them a job working at the mansion of Court Industry CEO Victoria Court. They're both fired after Jaime, Jaime, Jaime steps in to stop a confrontation between Victoria and her niece, Jing. And she tells Jamie to... No, here I go again. Jaime to meet her at Cord Tower the next day to discuss a job opportunity. I apologize for not getting this correct and what have you. I mean, this is a big film that's got a land cast in what have for the most part. Well, the next day Jean finds that Victoria is using the Scarab for her OMAC projects. OMAC stands for One Man Army Corp. And steals and so, Jamie steals the scarab and apparently hides in a burger box. Well, a to-go burger box, that is. And instructs Hemi to guard it without ever owning it. But it takes a turn for the worse, and soon the scarab gets attached to Hemi, turning him into the blue beetle. That's all I'm going to tell you on this story. So, if I give you any more, this will ruin the spoiler-free review. So, anyway, from what I've seen of Blue Beal, I thought it was good. This was a little bit more of an improvement over The Flash. I know I can 
consider that to be the top film I was wanting to see is some, but I feel bad I had Blue Beetle in 10th place. But after watching this, I'm thinking this is a bigger step up from this and a much better film. And I think it's, all, well, just even more better than what we got in Shazam Fury of the Gods earlier this year, considering I don't need to remind y'all how humiliating those films had the box office. <sighs> but let's not get ahead of this yet. Anyway, from what I've seen, I think it's pretty cool and it's pretty action packed. The movie currently sits certified fresh at 76% on Rotten Tomatoes. And they say, led by Marijuana's magnetic performance in the title role, the film is a refreshingly family focused superhero movie with plenty of humor and heart. I definitely agree in what have you. What? So it's so far gotten some pretty good response and what have you. And yes, I feel like this has a lot of, well, emotional feels in parts in my view. But overall, it was funny in some parts and it was so action packed. This was just so incredible. If I kind of thought I may feel like I was experiencing some movies from their big compared to Marvel all over again, you know, stuff like, a, oh, I don't know, Iron Man or Ant Man or. Heck, even their Spider-Man flicks all over again. But except differently, though. Now then. So, I really thought the story was pretty good. The score was done by Bobby Krilk. If I mispronounce that name, I do apologize for that. So, I think he did a good job. And Jan Manuel Soto does the direct was the director of this, and I will say he did just a just as good job as I could even imagine. Now, as for our cast, we have Solo Marijuana playing Blue Beal and Jaime Reyes. I've gotta say, aside from playing Miguel on Cobra Kai, I gotta say he did an exceptionally good job. Mm hmm. Now, I know there have been many versions of Blue Beal in the DC world for um for the last, I think, since the 1980s in my view. Blue Beal had been under license by different comic book companies in my view. I even recall seeing the first ever Blue Beal, but just more of a comical character. Just a man dressed up with a mask and, um, and well, things just like what you could see with, um, the Batman TV series in ways on um the electric company back that came out in the 70s, you know. Which of course that show had Spider-Man. Anyway, but enough said. Adriana Barraza plays Jimmy's grandmother, Nana. Nana, she's absolutely really good. I think you'll really like her. She really proves to have a little bit of well, I don't want to really say it, but you'll see. Damien Alcazar plays Alberto, Jaime's father. And Apidia Carrillo plays Rocio. Rocio, forgive me for mispronouncing, Jaime's mother. Brim McClensey plays Jenny Cord. The daughter of Ted Cord. You'll find out who that is when you see the movie. Raul Max Trujillo plays Ignacio Carapax, the OMAC, who is a bodyguard working for Victoria Court, played by Susan Sarandon. I'd say she's a fine villainess. That's just one of my a slight downside in what have you, but overall, she's fine in what have you, you know. And George Lopez plays Rudy, Hemme's. Uncle, and let me tell you, he is absolutely crazy. I gotta say, incredible. And Becky G's in this as the voice of Kajida, an entity that imbues and controls the scarab. Very, very cool. So, you know, the cast isn't too bad. But anyway. 
I feel like this was just so awesome. It, I love the, the, the atmosphere, the sayings, the action, the story, the cast, everything. This had a lot to offer. So, again, I think this was a big step up from The Flash. And just a wee bit more of a big step up from Shazam! Fury of the Gods. But again, everybody is still saying this film's going to be another big disappointment. Well, let's not get jump at, jump to any conclusions yet. They're still saying this could do okay. It may not have, it may not open as strong as the previous DC films, but I think this might be able to. But again, let's not jump to any conclusions. So, I wish Blue Beetle the best of luck. Seriously. Or else we're going to have to hope for the best that Aquaman next film does, uh, well, pulls it out of the black hole. But again, let's not jump to conclusions or any possibilities or something like that. Also, for the future of this, James Gunn said the film was disconnected from previous DCU entries and could connect to his DCU. And well, by April of this year, the character was reportedly part of Gunn and Stafford's plans for the DCU. And a few months back, Gunn said that the character would be the first DCU character while knowing Superman Legacy, which will be released in 2025, the fir is the first DCU film. Well, and Solo said Blue Beetle later on was a part of the DCU and future plans for the franchise, but was not connected to all prior DCU films. Explain the film lives in the world where superheroes exist. But that doesn't mean that a certain event or certain alliance or certain things from the past dictate where our film is going. He also expressed interest in the film being the first part of a trilogy. So again, I wish this film the best of luck. And hopefully this will do much better than than the humiliating failures Shazam! Fury of the Gods and The Flash has given to us. I'm serious. Give this film a chance. And give it a chance to get make it a little bit of money. I think if Barbie can do it, Blue Beetle can do it. Or else you've really broken us big time. Way big time. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting carried away here. But anyway, go see Blue Beetle. I think you'll really like it. For my score, I'm going to give Blue Beetle 5 stars, which of course means on a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 10. Definitely. So what did you think of Blue Beetle? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of the John claude Van Damme flick, Hard Target. So, and if you like this, consider checking out my spoiler-free reviews of the previous, well, well, the last three films from the DCU. In the upper left-hand corner is my spoiler-free review of Black Adam from last year. The upper right-hand corner is my spoiler-free review of Shazam! Fury of the Gods. And the bottom left-hand corner is my spoiler-free review of The Flash. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. Then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.